Can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, and I use Verizon. But, um, again, my name is Walter Hackett. I actually am a former banker. I spent 27 years in the financial services industry. So a lot of what Craig is telling you is just the sugar-coated nice part about the industry. Okay. I do have to, to make mention of one fact. Today is my 23rd wedding anniversary, and I want to thank my wife, Lorinda, for letting me be here. I'm here to talk about the segment Greg was mentioning when he said, sue the bastards, because <laughs> I'm a huge advocate of doing it. I am an attorney, I'm a legal aid attorney, so my clientele is limited to individuals who qualify for our services. Uh, and however, there are legal aid organizations throughout California, and I would certainly suggest that anyone looking for assistance uh, try to find one that can provide that. We are hoping, hoping to receive some funding from the National Settlement that would allow us to provide services to any home today, but we don't know yet. It's, I expect we're going to announce they found the Holy Grail just before they announce the National Settlement is done. That's something else. Today, I'm here to talk to you about using something I like to call the truth to defend your homes. And one of the things that happens, one of the things Greg had mentioned, very often, in, in my tenure as a banker, I would routinely sign a document called a corporate assignment of deed of trust because I would sell loans. I would also receive corporate assignments when I would buy loans. What I found recently, something I did not believe existed, but does, is a California-based robo-signer. And we found one. Her name is Tina Sebeyan. At least I'm told it's Tina. For sure it's T. And did somebody kind of scroll, looks like that is, is runoff, put change in the meter. I'd like everyone to see Tina's signature here. And what we have are seven documents. Here's one. Okay. T. Sebayana. There she is. And today, on August 19, 2010, she was an assistant secretary of Mortgage Electronic Registration Systems, Inc. Now, I happen to know for a fact she was not an assistant secretary of MERS because per MERS bylaws, only the board of directors of that company can appoint a corporate officer. And guess who they didn't appoint? Ms. Eliana did stop her from signing this document. Now, let's look at another one. <clears throat> she's, she's a busy gal. She's a Scorpio, I understand, if you're interested. <laughs> uh, here's one from Contra Costa County. This girl gets around. Uh, uh, this is a substitution of trustee and assignment of deed of trust. I, did, I have never seen this document in my 27 year career in banking which only ran from May 1980 to April 2007. And again, uh, Ben, can you scroll just a little so we can see lovely Tina's signature? There she is again. Today, she's a, again an assistant secretary of MERS, and this is in March 2010. Okay? Let's look at the next document. And let's scroll down and see who she is today. Today, this is July 21st, 2011. I, I wonder if she read her horoscope that day, because on this day, she signs as an assistant secretary of Home 123 Corporation. Now, here's an interesting fact for those of you who are playing along at home. July 21st, 2011, Home 123 Corporation ceased operations in October 2007. I was a bank vice president. I'm trying to figure this one out. I did not get the special time portal key when I was a bank. <laughs> But somehow, Ms. Eviana did, because she was able to go back in time, apparently, they forgot to change the dates on the document, but signed as an assistant secretary. Here's a tidbit about this. In this particular case, the homeowners are two people in their late 70s, lived in this house over 40 years. Bank of America used this document to foreclose on their homes and is in the process of trying to evict them 
today. Under California Penal Code Section 115, it is a felony to record a false instrument. Now, all of you could be jurors. If I'm telling you, and I can show you through evidence that Tina was not an Assistant Secretary of Homeland Security on July 21st, 2011, I suspect you would find this is a false instrument. We know, based on the San Francisco study, and if you look at it, and I suggest you all look at it, and if you look real close at the very end, it gets a little dry, but you're going to see my name hidden away there at the bottom. What they found is widespread evidence of this. 16% of the foreclosures were looked at. That's a pretty good statistical sample. 84% they found problems just like this. This is evidence of a crime, folks. This is what we have to get mad about. This is what we have to get people excited about because, again, the truth is our weapon. Let's see where else Dean has been. Let's scroll down here. Okay, here she is again working for MERS. Uh, let's take a look at another one. There's one I'm looking for in particular. There it is. Bank of America. Now, interestingly, somebody told me today she doesn't even work for them. She works for an affiliated company called Recon Trust. That was a company formed by Countrywide that was supposed to do nothing really but handle paperwork. The loan gets paid off, they record some documents, the new loan comes in, the Countrywide happens to sell you, along with mentioning or not mentioning that you're going to be charged a $20,000 campaign penalty and about $40,000 in loan fees. So Tina's a busy girl. I think we have one more. And here she is again working for Mars. One of the things I'd like you to keep in mind, and I know most folks here are not attorneys. Anybody here who is? Okay. As an ex-banker, I used to deal with people acting in what are called capacities. So, for example, we would have people form a trust, and then somebody comes to me as trustee and they want to borrow money. The concept here is known as agency. In an agency relationship, I have the right to act on behalf of someone else. Okay? The problem that our friend Ms. Sebiano has here is that in 1851, it's pretty soon, pretty recent, in 1851, the California Supreme Court said, if you're going to sign a document that conveys an interest in real estate as an agent, you must identify your principal. And that's important here. Because if you see this last paragraph, Tina's is signing the note, not just the deed of trust. As it turns out, as fate would have it, MERS has zero interest in the note. Therefore, they could only assign it as an agent. But it doesn't say that. It says MERS by Tina. MERS has no authority to assign the note, except as an agent. The reason they did this is they didn't want to repeat the home one, two, three mistake. They were agents for a company that bellied up in 2007. They just don't want to say it. I guess they, they have to respect some limits, apparently. But the reality <coughs> is, in my legal opinion, this is a void document. And there are hundreds of thousands of these in county recorder's offices throughout the state. Find them. This is critical to be able to fight back and have a real opportunity to save your lives. Okay, any questions about what I've covered? Is that just the foreclosure documents, or is there anything in the original loan docs that we could be looking for? Uh, normally what you want to do is look at your deed of trust. Okay. You're going to see in most deeds of trust that MERS is the beneficiary, and then in parentheses, solely as nominee, which is the type of agency. Okay? If you read your note, you will never see the name MERS or Mortgage Electronic Registration Systems. 
But this is a standard doc corporation assignment with the note because that's how we used to do it. Twenty-five thousand cases where I reviewed the back of documents. This is pretty typical of what we would use. Um, the deal the Attorney General just signed, how will that affect these? We don't know. Uh, I can tell you right now, the unredacted version <coughs> of every one of these documents has been delivered to a Deputy Attorney General by myself. So they have it. Yes? If this is happening, why hasn't the Secretary of State, and it's known as Secretary of State, uh, got her um, prosecuted for her notor not notorial acts? Because this is a major problem. The only reason I notice this is I'm an expert. You know, I'm reading this document and I go, wait a minute. Murr is again decided no. Murr is still the Nebraska Supreme Court in Murr is being Nebraska. We ain't no bank. Nobody owes us any money. We don't own any notes. But for whatever reason, consumer attorneys, keep in mind, we're not bankers by and large. God bless them. Because I lost a lot of sleep when I was a banker because I was trying to figure out what to do about this stuff that was going on under my nose. So they just don't know. Knowledge truly is power. But there is no requirement that this document be sent to a homeowner when it's reported. Zero. What again is the place where we would normally find the beginning of this trail of evidence? You're going to have to go right into your county reporter's office. Now keep in mind, it's reported. It is a public record. That's why the penal code says it's a felony if it's false. You know, when I try to depose Tina next month, we'll see what the of A does. <laughs> I have a suspicion they're going to resist. Yes. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm afraid they're going to occupy my parking lot with the of A employees. And try to <laughs> but I'm going to depose her one way or the other. Yes. Test you have to take to become 
uh, you could do that. You could assign his deed of trust to you, and then you can foreclose, whether he's in default or not. You just have to say he's in default. Then, you know, what's default between friends? <laughs> so, this settlement that banks are going to sign off on soon, will that make all this null and void? I don't know. See, we don't see, we haven't seen the real terms. My strongest opposition to any settlement would be any absolution involving criminal activity by the banks. It should not happen, period, because it can't happen to us. We cannot have banks existing above the law, plain and simple. I thought I read somewhere about the settlement that um, it would get rid of the ability for class action lawsuits related to robo-signing, something like that? There's great concern about what it's going to do, because my concern is they're going to call everything robo-signing. Well, you hacked that woman's arm off. It was a robo signing. <laughs> she was a rogue robo signer. We just wanted to put an end to it. Um, you know, everything's going to be robo signing. You know, this all is robo signing. Okay, well, you know, we got that get out of jail free card, and uh, we're going to use it here. And we have another one, by the way, in, in fact, an endless supply. Yes? Well, is there like a short list of things that should be in and things that shouldn't be in in terms of whatever gets decided? So it's some. Some letters might in terms of lobbying and lawmakers or holding someone accountable. So well, for starters in California, I'd say write to the Attorney General's office. Write to the Attorney General and say, hey, look, you know, the San Francisco audit says 84%, and this guy who's out in the, the, the sticks in the Riverside found seven of these signed by one person on his own. These are all from people that walked into my office. So imagine how many there are throughout the state. And you know, the folks that did the study for San Francisco uh, have this. You know, they knew what they were looking for. I spent a lot of time on the phone with them saying, no, it's this. This is the problem. This is what you're looking for. They expressly cite Penal Code Section 115, which I kind of help suggest they do. So this is what we have to do. We have to harp on this issue. And I guarantee you're going to find in most foreclosures, you're going to have one of these, yes? I noticed that it's notarized. Yes, and notarial fraud, <laughs> last time I checked, is not okay. <laughs> uh, maybe I missed that class in law school, but I, I don't remember it. Uh, so my suspicion is yes, and somebody mentioned this, I think you can contact the Secretary of State. Because Ms. Seviano, Andrew Pell, and my, I think and something. Uh, Anne says that she happens to believe that Ms. Eviano is an assistant secretary of MERS. You can find copies of MERS bylaws floating around on the internet. And they're not that difficult to read. You don't have to be an attorney to read it. Craig pointed out MERS, uh, the comical tombstone, MERS died in 2010. Well, if what? only it were true. But the problem is it never lived. MERS is a fantasy. MERS really was nothing more than a computer system based on the honor system. So the idea was that Bank A is going to remember to type into the system that it sold a loan to Bank B. Except, well, you know how things go. You're making billions of dollars, and the next thing you know, it's 2012. So, um, you know, they, they expected their I mean, look at it this way. If Wells Fargo, where I have it, but if they would just let me handle all my own accounting on their system, I'll, you know, I'll take care of the deposits, the debits, uh, and that's really what MERS was. It was the clients deciding what went into the system. You know, I keep telling Wells, I said, I should have at least a million in this account. I don't know what you guys have done, but I wish you'd fix it. Well, they believe it if it were MERS, because that's, it's, it's a nothing system. There are no MERS employees. Is, is it correct to speak of MERS in the past tense? Well, there, it's, it's like a zombie. It's Franken MERS. Because <laughs> you've had four separate iterations of this company, and there's MERS Corp, the holding company. Now, keep in mind, MERS was started by, you know, really altruistic agencies and organizations like Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, Bank of America, Country Club. You know, these are the people that owned, and actually still own MERS. They're thinking about recapitalizing it, 
because the president didn't have enough to get a happy meal. So you know, they're going to put more of our money in to keep where it's going. Keep in mind, we have some courts that, that are just dead set against the idea that a homeowner might get a free home. That's just the thing. Well, we can't have people getting free homes because that's something the banks do. Um, so we, we can't have that kind of competition. But you know, what the reality of MERS is that there, there are no MERS employees. You pay a membership fee, you get a number, you can log into the system, you have employees to log in, and the idea is um, so that we didn't have to bother with things like public records and reporting systems that are 400 years old because, you know, we're banks. So what did they do? They came up with this nice alternative. Yes, and it's, it's digital. Isn't that cool? We're going to have a Facebook merge. You know? But, I mean, by law, should it be illegal to have something? I, I personally I mean, think you merge... You a contract with somebody that says, well, we're going to give your, this contract to question mark. Well, keep in mind, no, there's no reason you can't sell a loan. But there's also no reason you have to pay just, well, somebody. Uh, you actually have the right under contract law to know to whom you owe that money. Well, we sold your loan. Well, who'd you sell to? Uh, we can't tell you that. It's a secret. Um, but that's really where we're at. That's what they've done. And that's what MERS is allowed to happen. Yes? Uh, I don't understand what's wrong with it. Could you explain again what's wrong with that document? This particular one? Sure. Well, the, what happens is the language matters. Something they taught me in law school. Words matter. So, at the very last paragraph it says that they're assigning for value received. That's an important phrase. That means, in theory, someone got money. You know, we don't think it was monopoly money. We think it was real money. And they got value. And in exchange for that value, Okay, and this falls under our commercial code, Article 9. They're going to sell the loan. And to do that, they take money, they assign it together with the note. The note is the obligation to pay. Okay, that's the part that matters. In California, the note's the thing. Whoever owns the note has the right to foreclose. The problem is they don't know who owns the note. So here, they said, oh, you know, I think I think that was supposed to be sold to this Securitized Trust, whichever one it is. Of course, it was supposed to have done all this paperwork, in this case, no later than 2007. So this is in whoops. Oh, did we forget to do that again? And sure enough, they fabricated documents. I would bet you, for the deed of trust, the actual lender is gone. Their history. They just don't want to disclose that fact. Yeah, and the LA Times reported about, I guess, so a few years ago, Countrywide never gave the notes to Bank of America. No, we actually have uh, Linda Martini's testimony in the federal case, a Bank of America employee, stating they created these documents as needed for litigation. Then somebody said, you know, we should probably do them before litigation. <laughs> and someone said, yeah, and they got a bonus, of course. So, because someone said, hey, yeah, weren't we supposed to do this four years ago? And yeah, yeah, they were, but they didn't. And here we are. Somebody lost a home because of this false instrument. And that's what we're going to do something about. Yes? So we try to bring this back to the practical. So we walk into our county recorder's office. We want this document. What do we ask for? How do we find it? Is it by name, address, or whatever? Well, here's, here's, my, here's my recommendation. Tell us the nuts and bolts. In vir virtually every county in this state, you can do an online search. Uh, you may not necessarily get the document, but let's say you're helping a homeowner. You go in, you have to know how they entered their name on the deed of trust. You search for that information at whichever county reporter's website. L.A. County is not online. Okay, they haven't realized it's the 21st century yet, but they're not. However, there are services like Netra Online. Uh, if you Google Los Angeles County, Grantor Grantee Index, you will get to a website where you can search by uh, date and by owner's name. 
And that will give you a list of the documents reported are relevant to that person's property. So that's what I'd recommend you do. Can you repeat that again? County something index? <clears throat> yeah, every, every county reporter has multiple indexes based on type of document. So what you do is you do a search for Los Angeles County Grand Tour Grand T Index. And then you go to that website, I think it's called Netro Online or Netro Online. Uh, but most other counties, Riverside, San Bernardino, San Diego, uh, San Francisco, Ventura, you can find the documents at the county reporter's website. And what I recommend you do, you know, go there, look up the documents, Whenever you see an assignment, go get it. Under the borrower's name. Yes. Yes. Aren't the title companies supposed to make sure these things are all They're recording them. <laughs> oh. You know, the title companies, you know, you'll find it on some of these documents. It's a, an accommodation report. Because title companies want banks as customers. They literally used to bring me gift baskets when I was a banker. And I would decide to use based on what I liked in the, the gift basket. Uh, but they did. You know, you had uh, Fat Cola was one of my favorites. First American title company in Los Angeles. Um, lawyer's title. All of them. Stewart title. You know, they all do that as a service to financial institutions to keep their business. Okay. Yes, your question. Uh, when somebody is servicing a loan, government servicing a loan, how do you find out what bank owns the loan? Okay, today, if you ask to know who owns that loan, by law, they have to tell you. They will try to hide the ball as best they can because a lot of the time they don't know. You know that it's really, wasn't Tina supposed to handle that? Well, you know, Tina's busy, so. So that's by law. As of now, yes. That wasn't true five years ago. But, you know, Congress did an act legislation in the back over here. Yeah, um, when, at what point does the legal avenue close? You know, uh, is this only when, the, during the beginning of the eviction, if you get a loan mod down the road, can you realize Sorry, here, the whole thing's BS? Here's my ahead. thought, okay? If they don't have the right to service the loan, okay, uh, any modification should have an indemnity provision. They should indemnify you. Because the state of the law is this. The mortgagee, the person actually, oh, whoever actually paid money, that's usually you in the form of CalPERS and other pension funds, you lent the money to your neighbor. So keep that in mind. Uh, if this didn't happen timely, then that servicer, like B of A, as far as I'm concerned, they stole your money. Because they had no legal right to it, they had no contractual right to it. In fact, all their rights arise out of the documents filed with the Securities Exchange Commission that created that entity, that particular uh, secured trust, securitized trust. So, you had a question? Well, I was just wondering if you did find this document and you uh, and it was actually signed by Tina, what's the next step? You know, the reality is you're, you're going to have to try and find an attorney. Now, you know, Greg mentioned bankruptcy. One of the things that happens in a bankruptcy is one of the few times they have to go to the court and say, Mother, may I, before they foreclose. They file what's called a motion for relief from stay. If you've got this kind of family, and they'll fabricate it. If you file for bankruptcy, they'll create one in case no one else did. I've seen duplicate assignments filed. You know, it's the same players in theory, except maybe there is a typo. In my day, we filed what's called a corrective document. So it would say, you know, we made a mistake, we're correcting that mistake. They just weren't sure if they had done it. And is it always Tina, or is there oh, another no. name? Oh, yeah. Tina's, <laughs> Tina's a little, no, but she's the talk of the town. So how do we know, <laughs> how, do, how do we know that's a false person? Well, what you look at is, who are they signing for? In, in California, this is known as a signature block, okay? Because corporations act through others, they have to have people like assistant secretaries, vice presidents, first vice presidents. So you look at the signature block. Well, and if you see it together with a note or similar language, and it, all it says is MERS, it's a no-go. MERS is already on record saying we don't own any notes. Okay. Okay. Yes? Um, I have two questions. First of all, if we define the block of time when these, this type of activity began to take place, 
and we looked at all of the documents from that point to the present, what percentage of those would you believe, or do we know what percentage of those documents might be illegal? Okay, well, there's two things. One would be an ineffective one, and I would say for sure three-fourths are ineffective. Three-fourths. Okay. Now, probably upwards of 50% are void or unlawful in some fashion. Because it could be, you have the right players, but for some reason, for example, this is a trust that's being transferred to, right? Well, in California, we have something called trust law, believe it or not. And if we're going to trust law, a trustee has to be the actual owner of a particular asset, in this case, a loan. If they don't own that loan, if the trust doesn't own that loan, and how do we know that? <coughs> trust agreement. Here it's called the pooling and servicing agreement. And it says how an asset is conveyed into the trust. And what you find is 99% of the time, it wasn't. So here. I wonder if it doesn't say trust on there, but if you're dealing with the, um, when you get the court of notes in the policy, they simply say trust on those documents before they, they file action in the policy. I'm not following. Oh, they assign it to themselves. I mean, I've seen from B of A to B of A, uh, one of my favorites, in fact. I actually helped a pro se litigant beat a motion for relief from stay because they forgot who they were that day. And so they assigned, they assigned the loan to themselves instead of from the actual owner. It was, it was kind of fun. And it was very common because you have the big players. T is really actually small potatoes. Yes, sir. Um, if it'd be all right with the group, would the group be comfortable with um, individuals bringing questions to Walter on specifics? Uh, we're on a little bit of a tight timeline. We're still trying to get to ACE and then do some breakout groups. Would, well, I mean, you know, I have a schedule, but I can stay a little bit. So, you know, if, if ACE can come up, then you guys are ready to go. Yes, ma'am. Could you give us your name and application? Walter Hackett. Hackett? Like, like Buddy, even though that was No, I can I'm, keep in mind, I'm, I'm here just as a private citizen today, so I'm not speaking on behalf of my organization. Do you have a website or do you have any of this information on um, Well, my name pops up all over the place. Uh, <laughs> um, I actually don't. Uh, but I would suggest, you know, you get check out Martin's, uh, Martin Andelman's blog. Uh, Martin's a good guy. Uh, talks more than I do. My wife was actually amazed when we had dinner with Martin one time. Because uh, normally, she always at least gets us in a word in edgewise, but with Martin, that's for you. So. so I would check out Martin's blog. Um, there are several others. There's uh, Fire Dog Lake. There, there are a lot of blogs that do a good job with this. Um, Abigail Field is probably one of the people uh, I'd start reading a lot. Can you spell that last name? Abigail Field? F I E L D. Oh, that's actually Field. So that's Field. She's a good one. Uh, Max Gardner, great guy. Uh, doesn't really have a blog, but he does. Timothy McCandless is a great one. Tim McCandless is, is a busy guy. Um, I actually got him to appear at a hearing for me once. And we have students in before you as well. And there's also foreclosure for us, by the way, and foreclosure handles. They're really good people. Yeah, there, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. Yes, ma'am. So, has there been any case filed? Under this theory that you're working on this? Uh, no. Other than the ones I personally filed, I don't think so. And you have filed some? Yeah. But and that's what you're deposing this woman in yep. the process? You bet. Uh, you know, Matt, Matt Wagner on his uh, website has a house where they want it free and clear. Because yeah, but they're, you know, you got to keep in mind that that's, yeah, that's not going to happen. The banks have to shoot somebody pretty much for there to be a free house. And it's usually an offset. It's not that the judges are saying, you know, there's a rule of law that's going to give you the house for you here. It's normally that the damages are sort of egregious, yeah. but that's deemed the appropriate compensation. Yes, ma'am. I have a last question. I'm thinking this pending settlement. If, if that settlement were signed, by the Attorney General for California, Kay Harris. Could an injunction be gotten against that if, if it uh, included information to let these, um, these criminal acts off the line 
Can an injunction be filed to try to stop that? You know, I don't know. But I can tell you this. You know, the, the laws do provide some remedies. But, you know, the Fifth Amendment to the Constitution says that there can be no taking of personal or private property without due process of law. Okay? When the non-judicial foreclosure statutes were enacted, there was no secondary market. You got your loan from your friendly banker across the street who, you know, you'd see a rotary or whatever it happened when you have to walk to. So you knew who you were dealing with. And you could say, hey, you know, I'm having trouble this month. I need some help. And because they had something to lose, they'd say yes. These banks are merely servicers. They have nothing to lose by saying no. In fact, they get paid more. Oh, you're in default. The meter's running. They get to charge everybody. They charge you. They charge the investors. They make money every which way they can. And you lose, and the people that actually own the loans lose. Only the banks win. And boy, do they win. Yes, ma'am. What laws would you like to see enacted in the state of California to protect us then? I feel, you know, a very simple one that only an original lender be allowed to conduct a non-judicial foreclosure. Because now you're dealing with somebody who's got something at risk. When I worked at Home Savings, very large thrift, they had to keep loans on the books because they were a thrift. Their charter required it. And so what they did was something crazy, revolutionary. They would actually modify loans. It, it was an amazing thing to see because they had something. So they wanted to work it out a bit different. Do we have thrifts anymore? Uh, there's a couple I hear about, along with Sasquatch. But I, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, when Home Savings was consumed by Kerry Killinger, then ran the whole thing into the ground because uh, they bought Dime, they bought Great Western. Uh, I mean, they're pretty much all the large ones are history. That's what California has to do is what Nevada did, make it a felony. Uh, for an illegal foreclosure, that could really stop all the foreclosures in Nevada. Well, they've given us all the felonies we need, though. We just need the laws enforced. Yeah. It's, it's a crazy idea. Because, uh, yeah, they will give you a park. Okay. Yes, sir. I just wanted to mention one thing. We've been trying to get a modification since uh, April 2010. Uh, we've been, since uh, recording our conversation, I know it's illegal, but we found, because they lie, we found them in a lie, and we've used that for wedges. And you can buy a recorder for telephone at Radio Shack. Uh, you know, I could never bucks. advise someone uh, to break it. But, uh, you know, I do have, I have a recording on my, my phone where someone said, I mean, they were, they were just laughing and joking, and this person clearly had no clue what she was saying. Because he said, I'm recording you too. And she said, oh, go right ahead. Go right ahead, honey. And he did. Yeah. <laughs> so, because uh, we are a two-party state. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of now, of course, if you're the victim of extortion, that's a different story. But if one person's out of the state, if that other state is a one-party state, you can't. Uh, it's a roll of the dice. We I mean, do it for our own advocation. You know, at the end of the day, what are they going to say? It's a practical matter. I don't know. Well, no. We, we wouldn't have lied if we'd known we were being recorded. Um, <laughs> Actually, we do it for our own edification, but it has worked for us. I understand, and I have no doubt. I have no doubt. Yes, ma'am. Why can't you call it to other attorneys? If you have a body, you have a document. Just do a big case and stop all the Well, legal aid funding has lots of strings attached. Uh, legal aid funding has a lot of strings attached, and I do mean a lot. So we have a lot of limitations, but there are organizations, the Western Center for uh, Law and Poverty, uh, Public Council. There are nonprofit legal organizations that will do those. Consumerwatchdog.org, uh, Harvard Rosenfield started that. I would strongly suggest you get in touch with them with their peer stories. Uh, Consumerwatchdog.org. Carl. Yeah, uh, one, uh, answer that one of the questions about recording. This is one of the things that I have done when I'm uh, making a call for, for homeowners uh, because we know that the banks don't like to return phone calls. And basically, I put on the recorder when I call because it's going to have a, their voicemail. And I let them know, my name is so-and-so, and this is the account number, and I'm recording this message 
to let you know that I expect you to return a phone call. And I guarantee you, you will get a phone call from them. Yeah, they don't like evidence, they're funny. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Always get their ID number and their name and what state they're in. Trust me, that works. Okay, all right, well thank you folks. I can see you. Thank you.